So then my friends, I could spend an entire series on security rules and in fact I do plan on doing a mini series on this in the future but for now in this series I'd like to keep this tutorial fairly focused and simple to give you an overview to them and I will leave a link in the description to an article for more information about security rules if you want to check that out also. So anyway, what are Firestore security rules? Well, basically, they are a way for us to lock down our data so that not just anyone could read or write to our database. Because right now, our rules are in a very relaxed test mode, which means that anyone with access to our project details on Firebase could potentially access data in our database and also manipulate it. All they would need is our database endpoints or our configuration information for this Firebase project, much like we set up in our Firebase config file for the React application. Now, that's a security issue which we need to address so that not just anybody can edit the data in our database. So to view our security rules, you want to go over to this tab over here. And these things right here, these are the security rules currently set up for our database. Now, the way that we write security rules is by matching certain paths in our database and declaring rules for these paths. For example, we may have a different set of security rules for our project collection than we do for our users collection. So we can create rules to match both of those paths independently if we want to, okay? Now, the top line right here, service cloud.firestore, that top line scopes these rules for the Firestore database only. Now, the second line right here, that says that the rules should match any Firestore database in our project. Now, we only have one database. So we can leave these top two lines as they are. We don't need to change them one bit. Now, the third line right here, that is saying match any documents in the database. And the rules that are set up for this path are right here. And that is basically saying allow anyone to read or write. So for any document inside our database, we're saying we're allowing them read or write access. So that is what is making these rules really relaxed. And this is good for development when we want to test. But if we go into production, we definitely want to lock down our security a bit more so that not just anyone can read or write to every single document. Now, a fairly recent tool that Google have added to this is the simulator over here. So we can simulate requests to different paths inside our database to see who could get access to it and who could edit the data. So, for example, we're seeing right here, we want to simulate a get request just to get some data. And at the minute, say we want to go to the projects collection and in there just to a certain document. So this is the ID of one of our documents. Now, if we were to run this, right here at the bottom. And by the way, I'm not authenticated right here. And this means that I would not be an authenticated user inside the application. We've not logged in. If I run this, then it's going to say that we are allowed access to the data. So that means that anyone can go out and grab that data. Now, if we were to make some other kind of request to update the data, same again, run this, we're allowed to do that, even though we're not logged in. And again, delete, run this, and we're allowed to do that. Now, this would be exactly the same for the users collection. Anyone could go in there and read users information or edit it. And this is all because of the current security rules allowing read and write access to every single document. So let's update those now so that not just anyone can access or write to these documents. So then, first of all, I want to get rid of this thing right here. I don't just want to match every document. I want to match our different collections differently so we can write different security rules for each different collection. So first of all, I want to match the projects collection, then forward slash the single project. So these curly braces right here, these just mean we're matching a single project inside the projects collection, okay? This is variable, it represents the single document. Now then, how do we want to set up these security rules? Well, I would like anyone who is signed in and authenticated inside our application to be able to read and write projects, okay? So allow read and write, but only if they're authenticated. So let's do a colon instead there. And this means we're gonna specify a condition. And that condition is gonna be if, then the request, we get access to the request object dot auth. So the authentication status of the user, then dot UID. So if we have this, and it's not equal to null, then we're allowing read and write access. Otherwise, we're not, okay? 
So for example now, if I go to try and delete this and I'm not authenticated, if we run this now, then we should get an error. So we can't do that. However, if I am authenticated and run this, then it should give us access, okay? So that sorts out the rule for our projects, nice and simple to begin with. And you might write more robust security rules if you're doing a larger application with more data, that's your choice. Like I said, I'm keeping this simple. So the second one, now let's match our users path. So forward slash users, then forward slash the individual user ID, okay? So that is the document that we have. Remember, inside our database, we store each user ID as the document key. So inside here now, what I'd like to do is allow create. So anyone can create a new user ID. Anyone can sign up, right? They don't need to be authenticated to begin with to do that. Anyone can do that. Now, the second rule I'd like to do, and we can add multiple rules, is allow read to anyone who's logged in. So we allow that if, and then it's going to be request auth.uid is not equal to null. So anyone who's logged in can read the data of other members as well, because remember, on the front end, we display that data of other members. Their name is right here. So we need to be able to read that if we're logged in. Okay, so finally, I like people who are logged in to edit their own details. So we'll say allow, write, and then that's going to be if request dot auth dot uid and then that's going to be equal to the user id right here because that represents the user id inside the database remember if we take a look inside this database if we open it up in a new window then we're going to see the id of the user if we go into the users collection right here so that is what this represents and we're saying well if that is equal to the UID of the person who's logged in, then we allow them to write to their own account, if you like, their own document. So if they wanted to change their name at some point, they could do. We don't have that functionality on the front end of the application, but just showing you how you would do this. So then now, if we go to users, like so, and I'm gonna say we're not authenticated to begin with, and then if we go to create, then we should be allowed to do this because we're allowing anyone to create a new account. So run this and we get access. If we change this to get, then we should get an error, and we get an error, so we can't do this. If we change this to update and try to run, then we get an error, and if we change this to be authenticated and we try to get, then run this, we should be allowed access because anyone authenticated can get read access. Let's see if we can write to this over here, so we'll say update, and press run and we get an error. We can't do this because the user ID must equal to the UID of the person who's logged in. Now we can specify that down here. So what I'm gonna do is grab this, which is the document ID we're trying to edit. And I'm gonna set that to be equal to the Firebase UID of the user who's logged in. Then we should get right access. So press run again and now it works. So let's publish these and then let's just then preview on the front end. Now it may take a few minutes, so I'm just gonna pause here, then I'll test it out in a second and see you on the other side. All right then, so now we've published those new security rules, let's just make sure the application still works and we can do everything. So currently I'm logged in as Mario and I can still read all the data, so all that is still working. Now, if I try to add a new project, I should still be able to do this because I am authenticated and we said authenticated users can create new projects. So title, collect all the gold stars, and then whatever for the content. Let's try creating this. Okay, so that's working. We can see that project at the bottom. So everything's working with the projects collection. Now, if I try to log out, what I'd like to do is sign up. So we said that anyone can create a new record in the user's collection. So let's try adding peach at the net ninja uk, and then the password is test1234, first name is peach and the second name is whatever, and then sign up, and this should work, yep, okay, so we're now authenticated and we can read all of the data like so. So this is all still working, and now we've locked down our data using the 
Firestore rules over here so that only authenticated users can read or write projects. Anyone can create a new user. Anyone who's authenticated can read user data, but only people who are authenticated can write to their own document. So that's Firestore rules in a nutshell. Again, this was very much the basics. So if you want to read more about them, I'm going to leave a link to the documentation. There's a lot of information about how to do many different things inside the rules if you want to check that out as well.